Good morning, my friends. So today is Tuesday and it is day two of our Earth Week investigation. The thing that I want to focus on most for Earth Week is the impact that humans can have on planet Earth. Now, impact is going to be one of our really important vocabulary words for this week because we can talk about the impact as a change that we can make. Now, humans have always had an impact on Earth. Impacts can be positive and impacts can be negative. We can make good changes for the earth and we can make bad changes for the earth. And if you are in my class or in um, maybe another second grade class, you may have heard of Greta Thunberg before. We studied her a little bit when we were doing our study of global citizenship in the beginning of the year. But I actually have this book in my house called No One is Too Small to Make a Difference. And I really enjoyed it and I wanted to read one of the um, first things that she says in the book because it's about the impact that humans can have. So she says, when I was about eight years old, I first heard about something called climate change or global warming. Apparently, that was something humans had created by our way of living. I was told to turn off the lights, to save energy, and to recycle paper to save resources. I remember thinking that it was very strange that humans, who are an animal species among others, could be capable of changing the Earth's climate. So... Greta says that she didn't understand that humans could really make a difference on the planet. And I wanted to talk to you guys today about some of the ways that we can make a difference and some of the ways that we have made a difference in a negative way. So let's look a little bit closer at the impact that humans have had on the planet and can have in the future. So one of the things that humans have done throughout the past hundred years or so has been to kind of overflow our planet with all of this trash that we're making. Humans all across the planet really have a problem with what's called single-use items. These are items that we use one time and throw away. Think of them like your fork from McDonald's when you need to eat your breakfast that's plastic, or maybe your straw in your drink that you throw away when you're finished. Even a Ziploc bag that you take your snack to school in, if you only use it one time, it is a single-use item. When we have all of these single-use items and we throw them in the trash, our trash cans and our landfills get overfilled. So we have kind of this overflow of trash in the landfills and in our oceans. So this is one negative impact that humans have had on the planet in the past hundreds of years. So when we talk about the impact of plastic pollution and trash pollution and things like that, unfortunately a lot of the damage has already been done. There are a couple people out there and a couple of organizations that are working to reverse that damage or make a difference to try and fix that problem, but what we as humans can really do is make a change for the future. When we talk about a positive impact, the good things that we can do, we can talk about the changes that we can have for the future of our planet and the things that we can do a little better. I think you guys are already familiar with some of these ideas, but a lot of people talk about the three R's, and we know them as reduce, reuse, and recycle. These three R's can have a positive impact through a few different things. When we reduce the amount of single-use items that we consume and collect and throw in the trash, we put less of this garbage into the planet. When we reuse items, we're preventing more of those single-use items from getting into the trash cans in the first place. Right here, I have my glass of water, but originally I got this as a um, jar of pasta sauce. But instead of buying plastic cups and things like that to use in my home, I reuse this glass bottle as a way to drink water or whatever else I want to drink. Recycling is also really important. If, for example, I didn't want to keep this glass jar, I could have recycled it because glass jars are one of the things that are really, really easily recycled. A little bit later today, we're going to focus on the things that can be recycled very easily at home without having to go somewhere else or take them somewhere challenging in order for them to be recycled. Many of the items that we use each day can be used again and made into something else in the future. So let's learn a little bit more about that. So this is something called an infographic that shows us what can and cannot be recycled in the North Carolina city of Asheville. I chose this picture because I feel like it works really well for things that we might already have inside our homes. It gives some examples of the plastic jugs, bottles, tubs, and jars that can be recycled. You can see there that they have mayo, milk, 
laundry detergent, and things like that. When you have metal cans, like a can of beans or a can of soda, you can clean those out and recycle them as well. Most paper can be recycled, so when you have paper bags from the grocery stores, mail that you can throw away, and cardboard containers from your food, that can be recycled as well. Same thing with glass bottles and jars. So if you have glass um, as part of your food waste, you can recycle that as well very easily. It also says not to bag your recyclables because we don't want them to be all mixed together when they get to the recycling plant. It's somebody's job to separate them by material, so we don't want them in a plastic bag. That makes it really, really hard to separate. One important thing to know about recycling is that when you put items into the recycling bin, they have to be cleaned out. They really, really need to be clean. You can't have icky food rotting in the recycling bin, otherwise that just becomes trash. So these are some important things to know about recycling the waste. We're also going to talk about something else called composting really, really quickly. So I am making my dinner, as you can see here. And this is the trash that I have created so far. Now, I'm kind of collecting it all in this egg tin here. So that's part of the trash that I made, but it is just helping me sort right now. So if you can see, all of this part of the egg tin is from my food. I made eggplant, and so this is part of the chopped up eggplant that I'm not using. I used an egg, here's the shell, and here's some of the garlic peels that I chopped up. I had to open a thing of mushrooms, so here's the plastic that came from the mushrooms and the lid from the Parmesan, as well as, like I said, I ran out of eggs, and here's the styrofoam container. Now when we have food waste like this, all of this stuff can be composted. Composting is when we turn organic scraps or food that came from the earth in the first place and we mix it with something that kind of helps it turn back into soil and it's really good for things like flower gardens and landscaping and other plants that you don't necessarily eat. And you can put other things in there as well, like here's my coffee maker. And when I open up this coffee and throw it away, I can put this um, coffee grounds into the composting as well because that's all organic scraps. But this stuff here, I cannot recycle. I can't recycle this plastic wrap. So if you ever have something that has this kind of plastic wrap on it, um, try to avoid that or make a different choice. If you have something shiny like this, Foil isn't recyclable, and neither is styrofoam, which is what this egg tin is made out of. So we have a pretty good mixture of waste here, and I just wanted to show you some of the different options. I also have over here brown paper bags from when I went grocery shopping, and I'm gonna use those to collect my recyclables. You can see in there I have a can and a cardboard box. Those can be recycled in your regular recycling. So as you guys can see, there's a lot of ways that humans can do things right and a couple of ways that humans can do things wrong. In the rest of this activity, you guys are gonna have an opportunity to sort recyclable items that you might find in your home and non-recyclable items that you might find in your home. I wanna challenge you throughout the day or even the week to look at the trash that you're creating and see which can be turned into something else. What can you reuse? What could you reduce? And what can you recycle? Take a closer look at the waste that you're creating in your own home and let me know how it goes either on Class Dojo, Google Classroom, or in the comment section of this video. Bye!